Hi everyone, it's Kelly with Women For One and we're, welcome back. We're here in this beautiful weather in Seattle in the summer of 2014 to continue our series on loving your body from the inside out. And I'm really honored to be speaking with someone that I feel like is an expert and has created this powerful movement for women, which is totally aligned with Women For One because we're a movement, on loving our bodies from the inside out. So welcome, Liz. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to speak with you. Liz D'Alto is a writer and a speaker and the founder of the name of it I love, Wild Soul Movement, which is such a beautiful name. And I can't wait to discuss what, a little bit more about that. Um, I could talk a lot about her accolades. Um, she, last year in 2013 in Shape Magazine, was named one of the top motivators um, with Dr. Oz and Ellen and Jillian Michaels. So those are some some huge names and, and some very impactful people for our world. And I'm really honored to speak with you about your program today. Thanks. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself first before we get into Wild Soul Movement and how you kind of came to this place. So I grew up really athletic. I was always playing sports. So always really physical, always using my body. Mm -hmm. But as a young girl, like I literally have looked the way I look kind of since I was around 12. <laughs> I remember like the third grade is when I started sprouting boobs. Like I remember <laughs> being in the bathroom and this girl basically told me I should start wearing a bra. So at a very young age, I started to feel self-conscious, not the way a lot of women do about their weight or anything like that, but literally about being a woman. Mm. Um, and I was raised Catholic, not that there's anything wrong with that for any Catholic people, <laughs> but uh, the idea of being modest and appropriate. So my mom would sometimes be, you know, if I had a shirt that was too tight or a skirt that was too short, those things would disappear magically in the laundry or something. I would never see them again. So again, like this message of cover up or it's not safe or something like that mm -hmm. was a little bit pervasive. As, as I was growing up. And so it's been interesting to me when I eventually went into health and fitness and was just working with women as a personal trainer. I remember one year I trained like 15 brides. And to see the lengths that women were willing to go to on the most important day of their life to just be skinny for that day mm -hmm. and for those pictures that would last a lifetime uh, was kind of wild. And then the biggest thing though, in 2012, I started working at, a, 2011, a personal training studio in New York City. It was a really high end. We would get a lot of fashion people in, um, really expensive. People were paying like $175 a session to train. And at a certain point, I started to feel like almost I was robbing people because mm. they're spending all this money, but they're still, everything's external, right? We're just reaching outside of ourselves, hoping if I lose the weight, if I look this way, I'll finally feel better. And what I would notice over and over again is people would get maybe the look, but they wouldn't get the feel. Mm -hmm. And it was that whole like working out and I wanted to flip it. And I had to do this on myself first and realize, oh cool, if I work in and I actually feel good here, the outward appearance, it's not that it doesn't matter, it's not that I don't care, but I can, I can love in here and then what was happening on the outside could be much more acceptable mm -hmm. instead of like the bane of my existence. So once I figured that out for myself, that's what I really wanted to teach women. I love that. It just resonates so much with me personally and with, I know, a lot of women in our community because, I mean, it just made me think of three or four years ago, I lost 30 pounds on that HCG diet and I felt great, but I still was lacking inside. I felt like, and everybody was reinforcing the way I looked. Yes. And, and it almost felt like a shallow, I was just sharing this with a friend yesterday, a shallow existence in a lot of ways because it's like, I'm the same person I was 30 pounds ago, yes. and yet now you're reinforcing me. Not just for my beauty, but you think I have a certain power, and, and our whole society feels that way. That culture, think? it's the a culture problem. And the culture yes. and the, the, the brainwashing of our culture for women around their weight, and if they have less fat on them, it, you know, they are more powerful or more yeah. intellectual. Or And then the mental games and emotional games that, what if you, what if you were to gain that weight back then? Well, I did. <laughs> I did. And, and how was that? I mean, you're interviewing well, me, but how was that for you? <laughs> well, it's hard. It, it's been difficult because it's also now that I'm in my mid 40s, I've got hormone changes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I think, and I just talked to Panash Desai about this because he said when he, when he started 
everything he was doing with a, a greater number of people, he was taking a lot of energy on. Yes. And so he was kind of coaching me on that and yes. saying, you know what, you really have to work from the inside out, just like we're, we're talking mm -hmm. about now. And also just accept myself and be healthy to feel good inside instead of just focusing on, I want to lose 30 pounds. Yeah. Right, because mm -hmm. what I find is asking the question, okay, how's it going to make you feel? So one of the things that I used to ask women when I was still doing one-on-one -on -one coaching around weight predominantly was, okay, cool, tell me what your goal is, but why? Like, why is that number important to you? Mm -hmm. And the answers I would get were so revealing. Well, that's that was my wedding weight. That's when my husband loved me the most. That's mm. when I, you know, was the happiest. And so it was really not, I want to lose 30 pounds, but it's, what do you think you're going to get? How do you think you're going to feel when mm -hmm. you lose 30 pounds? Why don't we just go right for the feeling instead of the friggin' 30 pounds? You know? So go for the feeling. Mm -hmm. That is, that's a beautiful thing to think of it that way. Yeah. Go for the feeling instead of the weight. Yeah. And how do you do that? So talk about your so, Wild Soul Movement. This well, it's Wild Soul Movement, but I'll say even the way Wild Soul Movement came about, are you familiar with Danielle Laporte and her mm -hmm. desire map? Yep. That is my jam. That oh, is the wow. number one. Back in the fall, uh, I decided I just I couldn't do fitness and nutrition stuff anymore. I basically just burned down my whole business. I stopped coaching. I took my product off the line. I, I just I, I had to recreate the the creation destruction cycle, right? So I looked at my core desired feelings, which at the time were connected, free, wildly feminine, and ease. And I said, right. how do I create a business model mm. and a program around these things? And that's pretty much how. Wild Soul Movement was born. It was deciding, cool, that deep inner wisdom comes from, for us as women, I even, this is funny, in my journal the other day, I found a post-it in an old journal where I wrote myself a note, my wild femininity will set me free. Mm. And I'm like, nine months later, I was right. That's so, it's like an intention. Yeah. And so I'd love to break down those four places and cool. talk a little bit about each of them because it's almost, it's so much. It's its so beautiful and powerful. I, I want our community to hear each of the different topics. So can you start with the first one? And, yeah, and talk connected. So, so what does that mean? So there's there's the inner and the outer. There's the community because I have, before Wild Soul Movement, I was building a community online for the last three years. So uh, there's, there's the connection to my community and creating connection among my community. But then for me, the most important thing was feeling connected to myself and also connected to my source. And you know, whatever people believe in, I believe in God. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, I don't need you to agree with me on that <laughs> if that's not your thing. But um, that, that connection for me, because I really felt like finally of all these years of seeking coaching and training and healing, those things are so important and they got me to where I was, but what's the point if I'm not connected to myself and I can't trust myself? Right. So to me, that's the root. That connection is like that deep inner connection to my own intuition and inner wisdom. So that's always my first and my last checkpoint before I do anything. Like it has to come from me. Okay. And then the next, the next one? Freedom. Freedom. Free. That, I mean that, for so many people it means different things. For me, it, it was literally about being able to do whatever I want and, and not feeling any kind of restriction. But that also involved being free to express myself as a woman and creatively. So some of these terms get really watered down because they're a bit overused, like self-power mm -hmm. and empowering right. and authenticity. Mm -hmm. but they're really true and they really matter. So literally, freedom to be myself. And it's almost like this idea that I get paid to exist. That's awesome, because it just, when you say freedom to me, the first word I hear is choice. Yes. It's that, that choice, you know, because at Women for One, we're talking about sharing, which is the community. Yes. And then making that choice is the next step. So we're very aligned in what the way we think. And choice relates so much, so my guiding word for this year has been discernment. Because you probably have this too, um, I'm sure people in your audience, no matter what you do, there's always requests on your time. And mm -hmm. for women, right? Many of us pride ourselves on being givers, and we'll just give ourselves away <laughs> all day long. 
And that discernment actually brings freedom because there's a lot of power in being able to say no to things that aren't aligned, things that don't energize you, things that drain you, things that don't go with your values. But sometimes we just you know, want to please everyone. So we say yes, 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 yes. And then there's nothing left for us. It's interesting you say that because the, you know, that discernment and that boundary place, I'm just learning at the, at the ripe old age of 45 <laughs> how to do the boundary thing without making either myself feel guilty yes. or the other person bad for being needy and asking. So it's really just like, no, from yeah. that heart place. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I just can't, you know. Say no. Not even I'm sorry. Grace. Not even I'm sorry. Right. No. Yeah. With grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like to use the phrase, I'm going to politely decline that offer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> because the, it's like, thank you so much. You know, there's, a, again, a very graceful way to say no. But I feel like when I was little, I used to play uh, Super Mario all the time. And I kind of feel like every time I say <laughs> no, and, and you have kids, so I'm sure even if you didn't play video games yourself, there were always these little mm -hmm. things in like the top of the screen that told you like how much power you had for yeah. your life. And, and, and I kind of feel like every time I say no, it goes like bling, bling, bling. And I have like more, I'm like charged up. Charging. And like more life in me. That's a really, <laughs> it's so great for any, any woman at any age, right? Yes. I mean, if you're in college, we're just taught in our society to always say yes. Mm -hmm. Women are taught to be the caretakers and to always say yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have, you have that freedom place mm -hmm. after the connectedness. And then what's next? Wildly feminine. <laughs> and this is my favorite. Okay. Because for so many years, I judged myself that I wasn't feminine. I do, mm. and I and I didn't understand the concept of like we we all have that balance, right? The, we have masculine energy, we have feminine energy, and it's how they're like married within us. So for many years, I was operating predominantly in masculine because this is our society. This is how we're raised: very achievement oriented, collect the accolades, advance, get promoted. Uh, and my first career was in sales, so it was very much about. Climbing, do, do, do. climbing the charts, where's my name on the sales report this week, and those types of things, which is very masculine. And, and I had to really work on that, that really feminine place of receiving and allowing and, mm -hmm. and, and the softness. But what I judged myself on, because I didn't understand the range of femininity, was I thought it meant like really girly and prissy, and that was it. And I would look at women like that and be like, well, I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a huge tomboy growing up, and I'm, I'm loud, I'm Italian, <laughs> and Puerto Rican, I'm from New York, like I'm, I'm never gonna be like soft and delicate, really. <laughs> uh, but then I, I read a book, I'm a huge nerd, I read all the time, and this is where I find some of the most valuable things in my life, called Awakening Shakti by Sally Kempton. Yep, Sally Kempton, I love her. And just being aware mm -hmm. of these goddess energies and seeing like basically the different archetypes of femininity, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm super feminine, but yes. mine is just like fiery and passionate and really sensual, not like delicate and prissy. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge awakening for me. So wanting to really embody my version of femininity, which I called wild, and that just felt so good to me. And even like you said with the name Wild Soul Movement, that was originally not the name. It was like this weird name. I called it the two by one method. No one knew what it meant. Mm. Everyone said it wrong. They were like two times one. I'm like, I need a better name. And Wild Soul Movement happened on the beach with my creative director one day. And it was like, this is freaking perfect. That's amazing. And totally That's... aligned with wild femininity for sure. It's very powerful. And it, it, the first thing that came up in researching uh, Liz's site, Wild Soul Movement, which I hope you all go to, um, and I know you've been you've talked about this before that that very powerful picture actually sparked a conversation with my team That's yesterday cool. and then in researching you I see you've been asked about it and you blogged about it and it was a, a big turning point in your wild soul movement would you yeah. like to talk a little bit about that yeah so the picture mm. she's talking about came from a photo shoot I did in 2011 as part of a mastermind with Marie Forleo, um, it was called Adventure Mastermind. So the first adventure was a boudoir photo shoot, which is basically um, nude or um, lingerie photo shoot. But the photographer, Krista Miola, it's art. It's not, there's nothing trashy, there's nothing degrading about it. It's very beautiful and classy. And I took this picture, at the time I had this ring called an I Love Me ring, which was a big heart. And the picture was just me from like here to here. And I'm not wearing a top, but I'm holding myself here. Mm -hmm. And it, there's, there's heart imagery all throughout the picture. My lips are a heart, under my breasts it's are a heart, so the powerful. ring. And yeah. it's black <laughs> and white, so it's really emotional. And when I got the picture back, I saw the picture and I wrote about this in the blog post. Um, I was so taken aback by myself and at the same time felt so wrong 
for feeling like this picture of me is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It, it really is. And it, and it was. It was it, weird <laughs> to feel that way about myself and the picture. It was so emotional for so many reasons. So at the time I wanted to write a blog about it, but I knew if I posted a blog on the internet where I'm not wearing clothes, mm -hmm. that my family would absolutely freak out. So in a way, I, I kind of told them I was going to do it, but really I was asking permission. And my mom flipped out. And I love my mom because all she cares about your mom. She just wanted to protect her baby. Right. In her mind, that picture going up meant I'm going to get stalkers. Someone's going to kill me. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you you're, you do the mom thing. I'm sure. Brene Brown calls it foreboding joy. That's All right. you can think of is all the disasters that could possibly happen. Right. So that's where she went with it. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to like share this experience of like loving my body for one of the first times ever, just like truly deeply. And um, we fought, and I didn't do it. And so 32 months went by. And finally one morning I was like, I have to do this. And I was, I was meditating and this quote came to me. It was like, never ask permission to express your soul's desire. And I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it. Mm -hmm. And I posted the blog and it was just like outpouring of women like, thank you. And that was the thing, it was permission, right? Permission to shine. And I know you've interviewed Mary Williamson. She's that famous quote where part of it says, when I shine my own light, unconsciously I give other people permission to do the same. And I created a campaign called I Shine You Shine for that very purpose, right? Just giving women an excuse and permission to express themselves and just watching the ripple effect. Absolutely. I think it's I think that's so powerful for so many reasons and for our community really we're about Sharing, sharing mm -hmm. stories, yes. sharing our experiences, sharing that. our wisdom, but also stepping into that place of truth. Mm -hmm. And I think what I believe is and how I define integrity. And I feel like, you know, I just wrote a blog about this the other day. I feel like a lot of times we step out of our personal integrity to support the integrity of mm. our family values or anything yeah. else like you did. And then when you went, wait a minute, when I'm out of, personal integrity needs to come first. Yeah. And then we can move into really holding that place of truth and integrity in all of our lives and the action we take. So yes. I feel like when I read that and I saw that, I thought she stepped into her personal integrity and look what happened. Yeah. Women just came by the hundreds and thousands saying, yes, thank you. Because when I saw that picture, I was my heart was moved. I was like, yeah. this is sensual. It didn't yes. feel sexual to me. It felt right, very exactly. sensual. It felt powerful. It felt like you were in your bliss. I hope everybody will go to see it because it's it's thank it's you. an amazing picture of you owning yeah. owning that power inside yourself. And, and for me, it was a big deal because, like I said, like I started growing boobs in the third grade and I was a tomboy. <laughs> I hated them. I actually hated them till last year when I moved to Orange County, California, and all of a sudden there was just this sea of fake breasts everywhere. And I'm like, damn, like people pay thousands of dollars for like my what? locally grown organic, I have this, I did this myself. <laughs> <laughs> I should be appreciating this situation yes, here. Yes, you should. Um, so I've since like thoroughly embraced it, but that was the same thing. Like that picture too was me holding this thing that I'd actually been at odds with for a lot of my life. That's that's so great. <laughs> and I've always had, had no issue with boobs at all yeah. because I feel like, you know, I had three children and I yes. nurtured them with my breasts yes. and I'm always like, I'm not getting a boob job because yeah. these, these things worked for me, you yeah. know, and I, in, in the way of nourishing my children and they yes. just, they represent life force to me. And, and that's you know? the most amazing thing. And one of the things I talk about in Wild Soul Movement, like there's something, I think it's on the homepage where it's, it says, you know, we're taught to reach outside of ourselves and um, we're constantly marketed this idea that we're not good enough and we believe it and we treat our bodies as a separate entity instead of like this miracle creating like life producing right vessel right yeah absolutely so speaking of that <laughs> there is this quote on your site that i was so moved by i actually want to read it and then i want to talk about it cool because I really feel like I'd like to get to the fourth topic that yes. you, you work with and we can talk about your series and, and what you do, but this is someone that worked with you in this series, I've right? I've never even worked with her. Oh! She's just someone I met at an event. So this is what, this is what Kathleen Jasper said, I've been working on loving my body for years, like many of us. Then I spent two days with Liz D'Alto, a few conversations and two blogs later, and I'm standing naked in front of my hotel bathroom mirror, checking myself out and saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. I don't do things like that. So whenever I slip into self-hate, I read Liz's stuff and listen to Beyonce's song, and bam, I'm a badass again. What an incredible 
testimonial. I mean, just Amazing. kudos to you. Yeah. <laughs> She, I met her at an event in April. So when she says we spent two days together, we were just at the same event. And um, I had her read the blog post because we were having this conversation. And she has a little girl who's like three, who's the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. And she was saying, I don't want to give my body stuff to my daughter. Me neither. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. And we yeah. all have it, you know. Right. And, and a lot of our journey is unraveling the things we grew up mm -hmm. with, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our parents, You, I, I had a conversation with my mom last summer. I remember being like, listen. I got to apologize for all the things I judged you for my whole life. I didn't know being a grown-up is freaking hard. <laughs> you were doing the best you could. <laughs> but when I'm 15, I just want you to be a superhero, and I don't know any better. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So with the program you do, what do people get? I mean, it sounds like this woman really moved you. You were, right. was moved by what you what you taught her in your blogs and your theories. Yeah. What do you get in this series? The whole purpose of Wild Soul Movement really is deep self, trust, love, and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So I work through four topics, surrender and release, because so often we want to do personal development work to just kind of come from this place of I need to be fixed. None of us need to be fixed. We're all fine. Do we have stuff that we need to release? Absolutely. Right. Because then we create that, the energetic space, the emotional space to form new beliefs, new behaviors, new habits, different feelings. Right. And then there's trust and receiving. Because kind of like we were talking about earlier, as women, like we're such givers. And this is one of the reasons I love Brene Brown. She points out that, have you interviewed her? No. We, whatever we can do to get her. <laughs> she's so amazing. Yeah, I love her so much. She's wonderful. Um, she says, even if you think you're giving with an open heart, if you can't receive with an open heart, you're also not giving with one. I agree. Because on some subconscious level, you're actually judging the recipient of whatever you're giving. I completely agree with that. Which is major. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the trust and receiving. And then there's wild dreaming and desire. Because you have to release, you have to be able to receive in many cases before you're even ready to admit, what do I desire? What would be my wild dreams? A lot of us talk ourselves out of what we really want because we just don't think we can have it. I've done mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, and Me then. Too. Last but not least is creation and inner wisdom, where you get to that place of that deep self-trust and being sourced from within, and then everything. You don't need feedback from other people, and if you ever want it, it's because your intuition guided you to get it. And then, like I said in the beginning, your first and your last checkpoint is always you. Right, so it's that discernment, like, if someone gives you information, you can discern if that's important to you and yeah. valuable. And not judge them for trying to lecture nope. you or not feel bad if you don't take it, but like, yeah. oh, that's that's good information to add yeah. if, if you want to. And that's that inner wisdom yeah. that you're talking about. And it removes about. a lot of, like, even things that you've mentioned, guilt, mm -hmm. obligation, just a lot of the stuff that many of us are, are raised with or is, we talked about earlier, society, like the programming, the conditioning, the culture of your body being an object, not like this miracle machine. And so we get down to, again, but it comes back to the self-love, trust, and acceptance. Absolutely. And I love that each of those different topics have a, a more of like a masculine and feminine balance. Exactly. It, it seemed like it, it, it does, yeah. where you have the creation and the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so powerful to have that balance in all of us, and, you know, when that's we're funny. moving forward. I never even thought about that. And you're right, and I love it, because that balance looks different for everyone. And sometimes mm -hmm. we're a little too much on one side, and things are going funky. And then, yeah, so there's always, there's so much ebb and flow. And that's something we talk about in Wild Soul Movement a lot, too. Everyone wants to live in flow all the time, and it's just never going to be like that. But when, when you have that wisdom, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can look around and be like, oh, cool, this is happening for me, not to me, like Byron Katie says. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let me find the gift in the situation instead of like, ugh. That gratitude, that gift place, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So how can people contact you and, and get involved with what you're doing? Everything is on wildsoulmovement.com. Okay, and are you doing anything specific right now? You talked about a shine campaign. Oh, that'll, so I'm in summer session right now of the 12 week, I, Wild Soul Movement is a 12 week experience. Okay. So we're just in week, I mean, I don't know when this is gonna go live. For me right now, sitting on this couch, it's week five, but who knows. <laughs> and then uh, the Fall session will start in September. Okay. And I'll run I Shine, You Shine again, which is a seven day, really fun experience. But actually, if you go to wildsoulmovement.com forward slash shine, I'm pretty sure you can enter your name and just be on the notification list for when that happens again. Because I want to learn about that. Yeah. I love that. And it's free, it's fun. <laughs> I just have seven days of prompts for people to share on social media. And what's cool is I also have a private Facebook group for it. So for people who want to 
who want to share but just aren't quite ready to put it out there for everyone, there's like safe, sacred woman space, probably very similar. That's wonderful. Um, to what you have where you could just share in that safe community. It doesn't have to be out for the world to see. I just love meeting women that are so aligned with my vision and Women for One's vision for the world and I feel like you're definitely one of them and I really appreciate you talking with us today. Yeah, thank you. And you guys can contact her at at Liz at wildsoulmovement.com and sign up for the Shine campaign in I the shine, fall. Shine. I Shine You Shine campaign because yeah. I'm going to. Cool. I think it's so it's cool. So fun. Yeah, it sounds like fun. And I'm thank you again so thank much you. for so great. speaking with me. And I hope we could collaborate in the future. Totally. All right. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.